like I find that the vast majority of um, right wing groups in Australia um, are not um, embedded in any form of extremism, and they shouldn't be. Um, shouldn't these groups? be treated more like terrorists rather than um, right-wing groups as they don't represent um, the right-wing worldview and and also neo-Nazi um, radical groups in Australia, which I think they're for, um, shouldn't they be called terrorists for their actions rather than right-wing politics? Antoinette Latrouf, this is ultimately about labelling, right, yeah, of sure. terrorism um, groups, and ASIO has said that it's going to designate things differently really to what it has done in the past. Yeah. We're now going to refer to them as religiously inspired really um, extremism rather than uh, Muslim extremism, uh, as might have been done. And ideologically in inspired yeah. extremism. Um, so, firstly, I'll address, I don't think... The extremism we're seeing on the far, far right is all connected to Christianity. Um, and so I just wanted to address that in the first instance. And so recently ASIO has come out and said that they're going to rename them. And I find that particularly interesting given that for, you know, for 20 or 21 years or since September 11, we were happy to call it Islamic extremism. But now that it's far right extremism and perhaps it hits too close to home to, or perhaps um, ostracises <laughs> some of the coalition's voting base that they don't want to call it that. Um, so let's perhaps muddy the, the, muddy, or perhaps muddy the water or change the name. But why does it not work that way? Just explain. So a ASIO makes these decisions itself and it's recategorised both how religious extremism is um, is described, so it is described in those terms rather than a particular religion. And so why was it okay to call it Islamic extremism for 21 well, years? Well, they're changing, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but that doesn't well, stop what? ASIO. Anyway. I, don't, I, don't th I don't think that stops ASIO then um, defining in particular incidents um, uh, what they believe the root cause is. I mean, they've made quite clear that they will continue to do that. But in terms of describing to the Australian community where the threats are, the uh, talking about effectively um, two types, um, religious um, violent extremism and ideological violent extremism. I just um, think... And that that's, that's ASIO's call, it's not the government's. Well, OK, well, let's put ASIO aside. I think the Coalition has done a, a terrible job at confronting a real and growing threat. So ASIO came out last year and said their workload in the past five years in dealing with white supremacists and neo-Nazis has tripled. The United Nations has called... Um, it's now the number one terror threat in the United States, in the United States and a bunch of other Western democracies. Um, during COVID, altogether now, who's doing great work at the front line of this, it says we are seeing, um, because of the isolation, more time spent inside and online, an increase in this. What, is our, what does our government respond? Oh, well, when, when ASIO came out, Dutton said, oh, well, we have to worry about left-wing extremism as well. ASIO has not said anything about the threat of left-wing extremism. Um, they've now called for, I think, a parliamentary inquiry kicks off next month, looking into um, extremism. But, again, Dutton has jumped in and said, well, let's look at Islamic extremism as well. It's, why don't we just call a spade a spade, look at the issue that is growing, look at... Let's call it what it is. I just think it perhaps makes them uncomfortable because the modern face of a terrorist in Australia looks like... could look like Hamish, could look like you. And until we have these discussions about what it looks like... Sorry. I look so damn innocent, <laughs> though, actually.